Siegel and welcome to Sustainable Today. We're outside the Twistle Ballroom in downtown Portland tonight, which actually it's a chilly night. Yes, it is. I don't feel it because I'm insulated, as you can see. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Bubble man. But uh, we've got, as you can tell, we've got a crowd of people lined up here, and this is for the annual Junk to Funk Trash Fashion show. show. That's right. Basically, what's going on inside is that these incredibly creative people are turning trash into couture fashions. Can you That's believe that? right. Yeah. Wait, I mean. I'm wearing an example from the 2007 show. Gorgeous, and I'm wearing a jacket that was worn by Mayor Sam Adams last year, but I took it from out of his wardrobe. He has no idea. <laughs> but now, Sherry, you uh, we drew straws. You got the short ones, so you're out here oh, in the sure. cold. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going upstairs where it's a little warmer to the green carpet, so have fun. All right. I'll catch you later. lined up for you tonight and as you can see we are not in our regular digs we're actually standing outside Lola's room which is a part of the historic crystal ballroom right here in downtown Portland Oregon and we're not in our regular outfits either you might have noticed we're wearing some very interesting outfits this evening very uh, these are designed by local artists and they're made out of well trash, trash. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what Raphael tonight I'm a bag lady that's right. Well, you're one of the highest class bag ladies I've ever seen in my life, Sherry. <laughs> really? So, isn't my co-host nice? So, so but you may not, you may find this hard to believe, but it's made entirely out of Fred Meyer plastic shopping bags. That's right, Fred Meyer plastic shopping bags. And Raphael, I have to say, yeah, I just want to hug you, but I'm worried I'm going to burst your bubbles. To heck with that, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never pass up a hug, especially from Sherry the Bag Lady. Now, we have a very special event here. So honored to be a part of this. Uh, this is the Junk to Funk Trash and Show. Trash and Show. It's the Trash third, it's the fourth year of, of its uh, inception. And I got to tell you something, that this is 2009. It's absolutely amazing. And we are here to bring it all to you. There's an exciting crowd, up, excited crowd upstairs yeah. that have gathered to see some of the most creative people in the world take trash and turn it into couture designs. It's, it's eclectic, it's fun, it's creative. And I can't wait, Sherry. I know, it's very Portland. You know, Portland is the perfect city for an event like this. I can't imagine anywhere else in the world that would be able to house an incredible event like this more than Portland. I know it's a great city. I don't know why this is the perfect... Sherry just left. Where did... Oh What's my going God! Here, Speaking of Portland, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the distinguished mayor of Portland, Oregon, Sam Adams. Sam, Hello. welcome. Well, welcome. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm, and I'm really glad that you're broadcasting from this great event in this great city. <laughs> Sam, now I, we understand you've been involved with Junk to Funk since its inception. Can you tell us why this is such an important event? Oh, anything to show folks the reusability of materials. Um, you know, 26% of what goes to the landfill is often cloth or cloth related. So uh, I'm a big fan of this uh, particular show. I've been a, a host or co-host for each of its four years. I, I wore that one year. You you wear it much better than I do, I must say. Well, and then um, Raphael's going to wear this, hopefully in the future. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I, it's, it's just a fantastic show that's a fun way of showing folks you can recycle and reuse in the most beautiful ways. Now, Sam, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Sherry, but I'm glad you're here. Why is Portland the perfect city for an event like this? Well, Portland is the only city in North America that we've reduced our greenhouse gas emissions um, based on 1990 levels. Uh, we have the highest recycling rate of any city uh, in the nation, and, you know, that's only scratching the surface. We still have so much more potential to be a truly green city so that's why this is just such a perfect place to have a junk to funk trash and show like this there you go i love it we're getting answers here on sustainable today uh, i know you have to run you know mayor it's not polite to leave a lady waiting and the lady waiting upstairs is your co-host melanie skinner 
Hey, knock them alive, man. All right. Have a great I'll, show. I'll see you up on the show. All, All right. right. Thanks for joining us. Well, let's not forget to thank the lady who's really responsible for this event, and that's Lindsay, Lindsay Newkirk, Newkirk from Elysium Events, who's been doing this event year after year. It just gets bigger and better every year. And uh, we're actually, she's standing by in the ballroom. We're going to throw her to her right now. And I've been waiting all day to say this line. Lindsay, show us your junk. He's your mayor. He's my mayor. He's your guy's mayor. The honorable, wise, and merciful Mayor Sam Adams. Well, welcome to the fourth annual Junk to Funk. Marjorie, you look lovely. Thank you, you too. So these, uh, our, our outfits were recycled from every Millie Vanilli CD we could buy at Everyday Music across the street. That's right. Um, so uh, what, uh, what do you think of being uh, the co-host tonight? I'm excited, this is my first time at Junk to Funk and I'm ready to get funky. All right. Now, um, you are, among other things, the managing editor for the Mercury and the fashion editor. So, uh, and tonight we've got this great band. So, do you have a DJ name we should go by? I was kind of thinking of DJ Fashion Fancy Pants. DJ Fashion Fancy Pants, and you can just call me Dr. Funkenstein. All right. Okay. Distractions aside, you're right. Tonight is about fashion, or trashin, as we like to call it here. We're talking sustainability, and this is where rubber meets road, where rubbish meets couture. And to get that started, let's meet this year's jury panel. That's right, folks. This is a competition. First, we have Kelly Carmichael Casey from Scrap. Scrap is a project dedicated to collecting and selling reusable art and craft materials at low cost to the community. Every year, Scrap diverts 50 tons of material from the waste stream. Fun fact, yearly, Kelly loads all 50 tons of that material into a rowboat and swims across the Willamette River naked. Time and date will be posted on my website. <laughs> Next we have Kristen Calhoun from the Regional Arts and Culture Council. They work to integrate arts and culture into every aspect of community life. Kristen's early trash and inspiration came from Oscar the Grouch and they still keep in touch. Also welcome brilliant Portland fashion designer Adam Arnold who also makes Adam also makes his own brand of moonshine. After the show, Adam will be selling his moonshine out of a rusty Ford Aerostar van in the alley next to the theater. Please remember to bring your own jug and you better look fabulous or he will not give you any. Our fourth jury panelist is Rhonda Chapman Dewar, the education chair on the board of directors of the Association of Oregon Recyclers. That's right. Rhonda is also Washington County's first sustainability coordinator and the county's first certified street fighter. Watch out! So if you live in Beaverton and you don't turn in your old cell phones, CDs, or used batteries, Rhonda's gonna come knocking at your door. And finally, let's welcome Tito Chowdhury, executive producer of Portland Fashion Week, who was invited in high school, most likely to crush the competition in any most awesome name contest ever. Let's give it up to Tito for another incredible Portland Fashion Week production last month. <laughs> Since 2007, Portland Fashion Week has been the first, until now only, comprehensively eco-sustainable production of a Fashion Week in the world. The world. Uh, the jury, you can take your seats now if you'd like. Get the heck off the stage, you're blocking the view. All right. All right, the junk jury is getting set. Um, just so you and the audience know, the judges are going to be scoring each piece on the, the use of recycled materials, creativity, craftsmanship, and wow factor. That's right, so let's get this party started. Let me introduce the Junk to Funk House band playing Trashin', bringing out the first set entitled PDC Crunk Junk. Hit it!
What do you get when you mix bike tire tubes, window screen, chicken feathers, and an old moo moo? Created by Amy Martin, please welcome a tribute to Portland culture, Muse 51509B. to design or in a room with an inflatable mattress, a vinyl bag, old sheet, and a fake flower. So we can at your crazy see grandmas. No, you get Addie Kessler's creation avant-garde. Take a tent, curtain, an inflatable raft, and toss in a few coffee filters, and you get Tracy Price's Totally Roughin' It Ready Whiskey Ride. Piece is perfect for the urban ninja on the go like you. Apply a few karate chops to some used shoe bags, a tarp, a tin pole, and you get one brave man, Brian Levitt, with his creation, the Trashin Assassin. Unless it's Brady Lang's creation, worn by Sky Johnson, it's Bedtime Bride. Not a bad start. Adam Arnold, do you have any comments from the first set? Uh, is this thing on? Yes, it's on. Okay. Um, well, I didn't have any time to confer with any of my fellow judges, but um, I, uh, just off the top of my head, thought that the bride was rather nice. It reminded me of getting dressed up when you're a kid, with all of your <laughs> old blankets and things like that. And um, I don't know, what, is it, what does everyone else think? Nice, nice set, though. Yeah. Yeah. Really well, nice. thank you, Adam. <laughs> All right, more drinks for the judges, everybody. <laughs> you know, Marjorie, I dropped by your house and found a gift stash. You went to my house? Yes, I did. I, <laughs> uh, I have keys to everybody's house because I'm the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw you bought a lot of cool stuff, an organic this, an ego that, lots of locally made goods, CDs from Portland bags, a few unmentionable items, and here's all the packaging that came with your gifts. Yeah, that's almost as um, big as the pile of gifts. Yeah, it happens every year. Did you know that 20% of the material, that's 20% of the material that goes into our, our landfill is made up exclusively of pa packaging. It's the stuff stuff. It's not even the stuff. It's the stuff that comes and wraps the stuff. So, a lot of it isn't recyclable at curbside. During the holidays, the increase in our packaging trash is phenomenal, Marjorie. Well, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? Dog! What on earth was that? Well, now you've done it. You've angered the miscellaneous plastics monster. The what now? Uh, that or Randy Leonard. You all know that plastic packaging, they can't be recycled curbside, so we just toss it into the garbage. That You know, the, the plastic that all these things are wrapped in cannot be recycled at curbside, so we just toss it in the garbage. And, uh, well, the plastics monster is made of that. Oh, jeez, stop. 
stop that. What do you want? No! Just because you not know what can and can't recycle doesn't mean you're just touching trash. Well, I never said I was just going to toss it in the trash, but what should I do? When have doubt what can recycle or how recycle, there is help. Just call Metro Recycling Hotline at 503-234-3000. They tell how and where to recycle almost anything. There are so many opportunities to recycle stuff beyond the curbside. You just need to know the what and the how. So if I call that number, am I going to get you on the phone? Probably. So really, you're a telephone customer service monster. I have a lovely telephone presence. <laughs> I think the garbage monster needs a, a, a cough drop or a lozenge. I think we have the <laughs> message, monster. Thanks for the tip. Me happy? Me go update Facebook status. All right. Let's hear it for the garbage monster. Very well, so here we are talking about keeping stuff out of the trash, and now it's time for some hardcore dumpster diving. Next up, we have some trashin' that asks the very question, is it trash or treasure? With the coffee drinking Kathy freaking Portland, what to do with all those coffee filters? Duet's creator Adrian Duckrow does by turning them into couture trashin'. Introducing Rebrewed. In Portland, the only thing we like as much as our coffee is sucking our coffee down during the morning bike commute. So now that's where we've dealt with coffee filters in the last presentation. What about those bike tube flats? Turn them into flattering dress. Well, please welcome, worn by Jillian Rabe, created by Lindsay Stern, rubber tube dress. Just drinking lots of PBR. Please do welcome Jen Jinnis and Alaya Indra's collaboration, worn by Alaya, Seagull Saver. Sometimes you just got a sin mail. I know it's very 1999, but since you can't recycle Tyvek mailers, this gal transformed them into sass. Worn by Becca Meeker, introducing Emily Rogers, Raspberry Blitz. Out of a dish rag, plastic bag, some cardboard, and well, girls, what else can I say? But lots and lots of maxi pad wrappers. Worn by Tara Herrick, created by Peggy Mead. This is the maxi party dress. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow, some hot trash and fashion tonight. Kristen Calhoun from the Regional Arts and Culture Council. What did you think about that set? Kristen. Okay, I want to I wanna know if that last one was designed from the shoes up, because wow. <laughs> it was I great. I think it was great, designed great from pairing, the shoes up. Great yes. pairing. And I think if Stumptown Coffee needs a new cover girl, they've got it. They do. All right, thank you, Kristen. Marjorie. Paper or plastic? You mean when I go shopping? Um, I usually try to bring a reusable bag. But... Uh, every now and again, I forget the bag. Sometimes I buy a little more than the bag can hold. So, paper well, or plastic? I figure that both are recyclable at curbside, so um, I usually go with plastic. No! Oh, no. 
What hath burned mine ears? Does this speech of recycling plastic bags on the curbside to be believed? You sound way different than the last monster. And you've the, grown facial hair. Well, the woes I've experienced, the slings and arrows of improper recycling have rendered my countenance a tad dramatic. Well, oh. clearly I've upset you. Was it the, the thing about recycling plastic bags? The maiden doth hit it upon the nose. Oh, he speaks Shakespeare. But I always thought you could recycle plastic bags at curbside. My good woman, gaze upon my corporal vessel. Do I look recycled? I, I guess not. All the plastic bags, good meaning shrews such as yourself, place in the curbside receptacle do nothing but ruin the other recyclables which with they are mingled. So please, take your bags, bring them to your local grocer, or take them to a recycling facility that can handle them, but do not put them in your curbside. So wait, not only can you not recycle plastic shopping bags in your curbside recycling, but if you did, they screw up the process for recycling other plastic stuff if you throw them in the recycling bin at curbside? The words you doth utter be truth. So, folks, just avoid the stuff and bring a reusable bag. That is the answer. Okay, all right, hold up. If we didn't put plastic bags in the recycling, wouldn't that mean that you wouldn't even exist? Ah, there's the rub. To be or not to be? That is the question. Is he doing a soliloquy? Whether it is nobler to simply take that plastic bag and promise to do something kind later, like buying someone a pony, or to stand up to the plaid pantry clerk and say nay. Mine Doritos and Nicorette gum do not need the services of your plastic receptacle. Not now, not ever. All right, we need to get Drama Boy out of here. Hey, I got an idea. Hey, Monster, the theater, theater critic from the Mercury is backstage. Scoundrel. He said my Macbeth was trite and not fully rendered. I'll show him rendered. I'll rend his flesh. Did you just send a monster to go beat up one of my coworkers? Yes, if he was a theater critic that trashed a performance. I guess that's, that's fair. Now let me show you how I am a monster of the Segway. I cannot wait. With that plastic bag monster gone to send your friends to the landfill, why don't you see what creative ways our artists have turned landfill potential into lovely? That was very well done. Thank you. Now, please welcome the next set of our show for the love of the landfill. The boys on the construction site will certainly whistle at this one. Made out of construction snow fencing, a safety cone, a rubber mat, and a piece of gum, and a old wedding dress, please welcome Emily Hyde's Deconstruction Reconstruction. Fishing line, coffee filters, milk jugs, and plastic bags transform from curbside to curvilicious. Ladies and gentlemen, worn by Claire Seipser, this is Eleanor Ray's Ensnare and Entangle. What is a diva to do with non-recyclable paper mailers, cardboard, and coffee filters worn by April Leehart? April Leehart, let's see what Rita Evaluate Hudson did with her creation, Le Pesson Cote. One of life's biggest mysteries. Where do all the lonely socks go? The ones with partners lost or holes in toes. Maggie Dawson says sayonara to sad socks and turns tragic to trashin. With her piece made entirely of old socks, Mademoiselle, sock it to me. This 
one is nothing but net. Well, fruit nets and some baling twine. Please welcome Taylor Stevenson's net consumption. solves that. I've always wondered what to do with those lonely socks. Rhonda Chapman from the Oregon Association of Recyclers. What do you think of the pieces in this set, Rhonda? But the one question I have is if that first one was inspired by a community service project. <laughs> that was the one thing I was thinking looking at the things you see on the side of the road. I thought, oh, might have been inspired by community service. It's a lot of fun. More drinks for the judges! Hey, Sam. Yes, you yes. You know, you've got to be one of the best-dressed mayors in the country. Yes, Gavin Newsom, eat your heart out. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, for me to raise some parking tickets, rename the Rose Garden the Marjorie Skinner Super Babe Garden? No, no, no. I just mean you're a, you're a sharp dresser, even in compact disc form. Where do you get all your clothes? Actually, the mayor gets a clothing gun. I wake up in the morning, stand in front of it, and it blasts a new suit on me. Oh, so you don't know where your clothes come from, do you? You know, I'm embarrassed to say I don't know always where my clothes come from. Yarrr. What? I think this one's coming for you. What? Yarrr. It's the pirate garbage monster. <laughs> and you are the monster of? Textiles, baby, textiles. You feeling me? I suppose. Well, dig on this. People buy a trillion dollars worth of new clothes every year with all the chemicals, water, energy, natural resources, pollution, waste and sweatshop labor associated with production of new garments. That number is a big turnoff. You get me, sweet thing? I think this monster likes you. You know, baby, 67 million birds and 14 million fish are killed each year by pesticides we use to make cotton for new clothes. Now, I've always said there's nothing more sensual than wearing the clothes you've already got. Wow, dead birds and fish. That's like the most depressing pickup line ever. Now, don't let me bring you down, sugar pie. I got answers, baby. I got answers. You know, green apparel represents three billion in new clothing. The organic and eco-friendly fashion is making its way. That may be just a flicker, but I bet you and me can warm that up to a flame. Should I uh, leave you two alone? No, please don't. <laughs> now, don't forget that buying secondhand is the most enviral responsible thing you can do when shopping for new digs. You got to think about what you buy. Thinking, baby, is the key. And you know, the brain is the sexiest organ of all. So what kind of clothing are you? Vintage, baby, vintage. That's another great way to shop to stop the waste. You like what you see? Well, I do like vintage, but listen, I just don't think it'll work out between us. I'm a mayor. You're a monster. <laughs> Okay. Well, if you change your mind, you know where to find me. Where's that? The Goodwill. I'm usually hanging out in the men's department. Let's hear it for the monster. You handled that pretty well. Do you get hit on by clothes often? I was once stalked by a pile of laundry. How'd that go? It was a wash. Ladies and gentlemen, for the worst pun of the evening, we'd like to honor Mayor Sam Adams for the Taking It With The Team Award. Round of applause, please. You're a real hero. All right, thank you, I guess. Let's move on to our Trashinista heroes who've made our old fabric seem new again. The next set, it's our own category. Up for award in the Textile Challenge. Please welcome the next segment, the Textiles of Our Lives. Take an old retro wannabe beanbag out of the dumpster and what do you get? Kristen Olsen huddled sun kiss.
Thank you. One can certainly get by when a simple tablecloth is transformed with a little help from some paper clips and old gloves. Worn by Evelyn Will Now, here is Rita Keating's Ellipse. car seat covers and recycled copper wire. Please welcome Alyssa Estea's gunny sack trench coat. Need something to wear after surgery, but you are sick of those old hospital gowns. Peter Singson went glam with his lap surgical gauze spun creation, worn by Emily Wilson here. Lap or Tommy sponge dress. Those are some sexy scrubs. Kelly Carmichael Casey from Scrap, what did you think? Well, first of all, I'd like to say I have a little bone to pick with this whole group. Um, there wasn't a single one who threw tchotchkes over to the judges, and I think that was a problem. Um, but I'm easy. Uh, I don't know, I think that this was a great group. The uh, gunny sack trench coat was a little too Cold War Gestapo trashing for me, but. Um, I really like the bean bags, including the bean accessories. That was pretty cool. Um, great job. I'd love to know how to, to dye those uh, latex gloves. Wow, these are tough judges, tough, good judges. We like that. Um, so Marjorie, as fashion editor for the Mercury newspaper, when you're not judging fashion, um, you know, what do you, what do, you do? Who says I ever stop? Oh, fair enough. I know you're not one of the, our jury panelists tonight, but what do you think of the pieces so far tonight? Honestly? Uh, please. I'd wear anything we've seen tonight. So we can assume that you'll be showing up on work on Monday at the Palatial Mercury Headquarter Tower in downtown Portland in a beanbag dress? No, those people are lucky I wear clothes at all. Okay, we're lucky. Oh, so, so I take it the, uh, the attire at the Mercury office is pretty casual? Most of the guys just show up wearing, like, swim trunks. There's one guy that wears those onesie pajamas with the butt flap. Well, that must be really interesting. Well, it'd be better if he got some buttons for the flap. Oh. What about you? What do you guys wear at City Hall? Uh, well, uh, you know, it's the official type of, you know, suit, tie, things like that. No, oh, why are you acting so weird? What uh, do you, what, what, come on, what do you guys wear? Well, you know, you know, fabric, stuff that covers your whole body and stuff. Sam. All right, we wear Snuggies, okay? We wear Snuggies all day long in the mayor's office. Footies, I can't live without footies. In fact, I've got footy pajamas on under this outfit right now. Ugh, oh my god. I know, I know, I can't help it. They're just so comfortable. You know, they're like a blanket with sleeves. Yeah, that's what I've heard. So help me, I can't stop wearing Snuggies at work. Have you ever made, like, executive decisions while wearing your Snuggie? Uh, well, yeah, beginning in 2010, 2011, the new Trail Bells, you... Trailblazers uniforms will be Snuggies. Oh, Sam, no. Yes. No, no, no. How did you even find one in Greg Oden's size? We had to custom make it, all that fabric. It was so expensive. So to pay for it, I, 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 I sold the Hawthorne Bridge. You what? Yes, I know. Now it will be the Halliburton Bridge. It'll cost $7,500 to cross every day. Oh my God. We're gonna get you some help. Maybe this next set of fashion will break you of your horrible Snuggie addiction. Oh, please, yes. Let's get them out here and stop this. All right, in an effort to win back Mayor Adam's sanity, let's welcome our next set of sustainable fashion entitled An Ode to Stuff. 
Mary Poppins, eat your heart out. A spoonful of netting, electrical wire, pillows, plastic bags, an umbrella, and a shower curtain brings you Sarah Slubley's creation worn by Molly Ford. Please welcome Lady Cumulus. Sustainable bride, something old, an old sheet, something new, bubble wrap, something borrowed, an old curtain, and something, well, actually we have nothing blue, just a bunch of used plastic grocery bags. All together, this Pete's puts Vera Wang to shame. Worn by Jennifer O'Leary, it's Rebecca Ross's Red, White, and Bride. Check out this Portland biker chick mixing it up with bike tire tubes reconstructed with packing straps, mini blinds, and vacuum seal copy bags. Introducing Leah Noble Davidson's Blind Lock, Black Magic, and Persistence. Shake it with some old clothing and you get, worn by Jenny Lockwood, Emmy Lalonde's Party Queen. Turn glam when Ruth Waddy mixes plastic, styrofoam, Tyvek envelopes, tissue, and old paint bucket lids in her creation, Plastic Pride. That sustainable bride look's gonna be all the rage next wedding season. Tito from Portland Fashion Week. What did you think of the pieces? Well, I thought Red, White, and Bride was the uh, best one. That was really good in all sorts of ways, in design, in construction, and also, I mean, it had a huge wow factor as a whole. It was really good. I liked it. So, Sam, are you feeling better now? My only question is, uh, who drank all those Royal Crown bottles of booze? I think it was the plastic bag monster. The plastic bag monster. All right, let's do it. Here's the next set, titled Waste Not, Want Not. Take this, Zeus. Newspaper and butcher paper is all Osha Hall needed to make her ensemble. Or by her sister, Ella Hall, please welcome Armor of God. wonder what to do with all those phone books that so kindly show up at your doorstep multiple times a year. Emma and Ellie Pellet took it upon themselves to go beyond the recycling bin. Worn by Emma, here is their creation, the paper doll. away, mini blinds, bicycle tires, a bicycle wheel, and old hardware are Jen the Mastra's solution, worn by Emily Alexander in Chastity Blind. Look at this, she has a friend.
What happens when you get creative with grandma's old treasures? Doilies, tablecloth, shopping bag, boot and tea bag paper worn by high, you get Rio Wren's discarded to dainty. But what to do with all those film reels that don't make it to Hollywood? Sudan Price and Janice Archer have it going on with their collaboration. Worn by Sudan, here is Film Dress. Okay, that is the final set of trash and for our show tonight. Let's give it up for all the fabulous contestants. That's right. So as you can tell, the excitement is really building here in the green room during the intermission of the fourth annual Junk to Funk. And I didn't think it would be possible, but I've, we've managed to catch up with Lindsay Newkirk, who is the, should we say, designer and creator of Junk to Funk? I'm actually not a designer. I'll say creator and director of well, You designed the yeah. event. Yeah. Yes, I suppose I designed the event. Yeah, thank you. Besides walking away and really being oohed and awed by the wonderful, ama amazing, creative dresses here, what, what uh, takeaway message would you want people to have? Obviously, I think the biggest piece of junk to funk is that it's the creative reuse. So when you have something that you need to get rid of, what kind of inspiration do you have to make it into something else that's kind of neat and interesting? And of course, there's the three R's. So before that, one of the most important things from an environmental respect is to reduce. To reduce. Right. So before we buy, let's think about one's first needs. If we're going to buy, do we need new or used? Are we supporting local? Are we supporting more sustainable options? And then, of course, at the end of life for our stuff, where is it going? Are we, do, are we being responsible at recycling? Are we finding new ways, kind of taking the next level of re recycling our stuff? Well, great. Thank you very much, and congratulations, Lindsay. This is a, I'm sure everybody is excited to get back up there and watch the rest of the Trash and Show. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you, Sustainable Today. We are having a great time here on the green carpet, but I'm sure a lot of excitement is happening right above us in the ballroom. Let's check in with our very own correspondent, Chelsea Peel. So here at Junk to Funk, this is more than just a fashion show. This is about education. Where, what is throwing away? It doesn't really exist. So here we have where to put recyclables and two garbage warriors that are helping to educate the event folks about where to put this. Now tell me, what, what are you noticing in people's eyes when they're looking at the gray water and the, the compost of, of cups? Anything come up? I like it. It's like, it's enlightenment of sorts. They really want to throw stuff away, but they see that they can do other things with it. I think that people are really surprised this is all compostable. Um, so you see people trying to put it, you know, in the other cans, but it's, it's pretty great that you can actually compost this. Well, Raphael, as you can tell, that the energy is just really palpable Ooh. here. Things yes. are happening. Everyone's excited. I mean, I think we're recycling the energy. We, <laughs> I think we are. <laughs> and we need it all the way till the end of the evening. But hold on real quick. Uh, I don't mean to oh, get oh. off camera. We have someone very interesting. Let me just gently grab this guy right up. I, I saw him. I'm sorry, Sherry, through the corner of my eye. Isn't this an wow, amazing outfit? First impressive. of all, what's your name? My name is Gregory Pulver. Are you from the area? Are you from Portland? Yep. I'm a new costume designer. I just moved here. You're a costume designer. Yeah, yeah, I am. Why so, weren't you in the show? Oh, I just moved here, so I, I just mean, found out about it. I threw this together today. <laughs> oh. Wow, you did that all from scratch and oh, castanets. Yeah, castanets. castanets. Well, I got a little. I got a little. Can you, can you move your arm? <laughs> yeah, let's hear, can we hear that, Sherry? <laughs> <laughs> and then my partner here actually made this screen. Oh, come on, yeah, come on, on don't camera. Be yeah, welcome to Sustainable We're Today. A little, it's, it's a little breezy for fall, <laughs> but um, it's nice. But it's I very, see you went modest though by putting a shirt under it. So uh, the dogs actually ruined a screen door, so we. <laughs> oh, you see, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> Love the boom here. Yeah. Well, yeah. great job. Welcome to Thank Junk you. to Funk. Thank Welcome you. to Sustainable Today, and have a great time up there. All right, well, uh, we're going to check in upstairs in the ballroom and see what's going on up there. Ladies and gentlemen, reminding us that trash is scary, our trash monster. Look at them all.
getting down to what we've all been waiting for, the announcement of the winners. But first, who thinks this has been the best junk to funk fashion show ever? Challenge winner receiving fifty dollars is the envelope, and the winner is Sunkissed, Kristen Olson Huddle. Third place prize receiving $100 goes to Third place goes to Net Consumption Taylor Cash Sherman and Swinson $250 goes to second place, $250. Plastic Pride by Ruth Waddy. This is first place, but remember, after first place, we also have the People's Choice Awards. So we have two more prizes, but first place, here it is, $500, and the respect of the entire city of Portland. Chastity Blonde! award goes to. They are receiving $50 and a photo shoot with domestic bliss photography.
like to thank not only the winners, but every designer tonight for their truly inspired fashion. On behalf of Junk to Funk and Asylum Events, we would also like to thank... The Junk to Funk House Band and Junquestra. Our honorable and fair Junk Jury members! Come to Life Arts for this truly awesome set design and the runway, made almost entirely out of junk. And lastly, an especially big thanks to all of you. We hope to see you again for Junk to Funk in 2010. Have a good night. So things are starting to wind down a little bit here on the green carpet. Hey, after hey, Sher Sherry, oh. Sherry, <laughs> Sherry, I feel, I feel like we're in the presence of royalty. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, Raphael, wow. you're right. So we have um, Jen LaMastra, right? The design, LaMastra, the designer of the first place design and also People's Choice. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And we have the model, Emily mm -hmm. Alexander. Mm -hmm. And we also have the dog's designer. Let's not forget that robotic dog. <laughs> yes. Everyone wants to adopt it. <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's kind of tongue tied right now, but. <laughs> Lily over there. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, one of the things I've been wondering all evening is um, if you look at uh, design and construction, can you describe how long it takes for the, s the concept and then maybe the sourcing and then the construction? It probably took me about three months fantasizing about it and constructing it. The wig that I've been fantasizing about for three years, I finally built it. We were staying up till like four in the morning. I almost, it didn't get done because it was really heavy, how do we rig it, what's going to happen, and I had a garbage can that we destroyed for it. Let me tell you something, the crowd went bananas when they saw this creation. What is that feeling when you're walking down the catwalk and people are just going crazy? Well, it was really fun. Um, I think what made it doable for me, because I'm not a professional model being five foot two, <laughs> and a little old for the business, um, was Jen and I threw out our fittings and discussions about what she saw, what her vision was. We'd created a, a character, mm. then it made it possible. So that's kind of how we approached it. So congratulations again, ladies, models, yes, and designers on your win. You all Kudos. look beautiful. And um, so, uh, Ruth, where did you say you were going to spend the money? Oh, Disneyland. And Taylor? <laughs> uh, not on a brand new dress. <laughs> Lynn, what about you? Really? I don't know, maybe a dog bone. <laughs> Emily? I'm going to make Jen take me out to lunch. <laughs> so Jen, it sounds like your earnings are already spent. Uh, yeah, I guess so. So I'm Raphael Siegel, and I'm here with Sherry Steller. That's, that's wait a minute, right. that's Something's not right. Wait, wait, wait. Have we, have we been repurposed tonight? Maybe. Oh. I don't know. After what I saw tonight, I wouldn't mind that. Well, but does that mean we're, I'm going to have to be Raphael until the 2010? Yeah, it's only, it's only a year. It's fine. Yeah, well... Wow, I, I'm so excited for next year. I know. Oh, well, hey, I'm excited <laughs> for this year. I'm going to be Sherry Stuller all year long. That's going to be very interesting and confusing to all the people that know me. What? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, wow, I'm telling oh. you, Junk to Funk 2009 was better from what I heard than Junk to Funk 2008. And what's next year going to be like? It's, it's going to be even better. But in the meantime, while the year goes on, tune into Sherry and I every month bringing you Sustainable Today where we give you the tools to, to be, be trashily, trashily sustainable, sustainable today. today. Who out there loves junk? You guys love junk? We got some junk for you up here. I don't know if you can see what this man has his in hands over here, but it's a rubber band.
I'm going to do a formal introduction here. We're going to make our rounds. We got Ben Schroeder on a rubber band. <laughs> 